Hey everybody, thanks for watching A Guy Doing Stuff. I'm Adam and today I'm gonna be attaching the bridge. This dark piece of wood is the bridge on my first guitar. The strings rest on the bone saddle here and then go through the soundboard and are held in by these bridge pins. Things can get really complicated when you start talking about intonation and compensation and the placement of everything. I'm gonna try to keep this video relatively simple and just show you guys my process for doing it. The first step is to get the shape out of a blank. I'm using this little piece of Indian rosewood for my bridge. The thickness is gonna depend on the design of your guitar. Mine calls for about 3 eighths of an inch thick. I get the approximate measurements from my plans, draw the shape onto the blank, and cut it oversize on the bandsaw. I can leave the front edge straight, but I clean the ends up on the disc sander, and then clean the back up on the belt sander. There's about three and a quarter inch on the center that stays full thickness. The wings taper down to just under an eighth inch. The first time I did this, I tried to taper it on my belt sander, but that was too aggressive. The perfect tool for this would be a spindle sander, but I don't have one of those, so I'm just gonna use hand tools here. I'm gonna fade the back edge down a little bit too. Once I'm happy with the shape of it and the wing tapers, I have to transfer the radius from the soundboard onto the back of the bridge. The soundboard has that bulge on it, and you don't wanna glue the flat bridge to the bulge, so I tape a piece of sandpaper to the area I'm going to be gluing it down to and rub it like this without pushing down too hard until their surfaces match. Now I sand the whole thing smooth to 220 grit before I glue it down. Okay, here's some complex luthiery stuff that I'm probably not going to do a very good job of explaining. The saddle is supposed to sit at about double the distance from the nut to the 12th fret. I say about double because you have to add a little tiny bit to that measurement to account for intonation. For the high E string it's about a sixteenth of an inch and it's about three sixteenths of an inch for the low E string. I'm gluing down the bridge before I cut the saddle slot so I don't have to worry too much about the exact placement right now. I'm just going to put it about a sixteenth of an inch less than double the distance of the nut to the 12th fret to give myself plenty of room to cut the saddle slot. I'm gonna put some links to some articles in my video description for anybody that wants to read more about intonation and compensation and all that complicated stuff. I spend a lot of time making sure it's centered and square. I'm gonna use these two clamps that have a long reach to clamp it down. I use one of these makeshift coals for each side to distribute the pressure and I tape this stick over the X braces on the inside to use as a coal in there. During the dry run, I stick some scrap pieces of double-sided tape on them down so I can easily find this placement again when I come back with the glue. This is a really awkward glue up, so I'm really gonna take my time so I can get it just right. I remeasure before the glue dries to make sure it's in the right spot. Then I take the scrap pieces off and wipe away any excess glue. After the glue dries, I re-sand it all down to 220 grit again. That's it. I am done building this guitar. Um, done with the building part, I still have to put the finish on it and then do the nut and saddle. I'm going to try in my next video to do the whole finish process just in one video. For the final setup, which is the nut and the saddle, I'm going to be taking it to a guy that repairs instruments for a living just because I just want it that last step to be done right. It's just a totally different skill set than guitar building. I kind of wanted to do that part myself, but also I'd rather have somebody that knows what they're doing do that final, final part, because for the playability, it really helps to have it done really, really well. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you to WorkSharp Tools for sponsoring this series, and don't forget to hit subscribe to stay up to date on my videos.